It's not too long ago that I talked about a super cheap vlogging device by Sony and this is called the Sony Xperia 10 Mark V. At least if you want to do full HD vlogging with this one, this is the one choice that you can do. And this one device came out I think two years ago already, 2013. Uh, 13, 2023, wow, time flies. <laughs> 23 of course. And uh, this one received now Android 15 as an update. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about what's new. As Sony is not giving us any change log, I had to figure it out on my own. So let's get started. So here we have the Xperia 10 Mark V. Hopefully I've fixed the flickering at the beginning. And uh, yeah, this has a gorgeous display, but only 60 hertz here, which is like a bit of a bummer. But you can see the animations are running fluid. The only thing that you will notice is, especially when you upgrade first time, it will stutter a little bit there because it's optimizing apps in the background and you might also update some applications via the Play Store. So we first start off with the first new thing, which is the Quick Toggles. As you can see here, we have this new design that was first introduced with the Xperia 1 Mark 6. Now also Xperia on the Xperia 1 Mark 5. 10 Mark 5 actually and uh, this is uh, quite nice because it gives you more quick toggles and I love my quick toggles especially like for turning on the flashlight here uh, and such things. Uh, QR code reader is uh, nice and sometimes screen recording is also pretty nice. So you have more quick toggles 8 here instead of like only what was it 5 or 6 uh, that you had before on Android 14 so this is a big upgrade I think for those who like like the quick toggles. Otherwise when you go into settings and you we are get a new feature under privacy it's called privacy where is it private space actually and uh, this one gives you like private space uh, I have to with your fingerprint enable it uh, which is like a new private space for applications that are like blocked from everything else in the system so they can be used like for example if you want to install whatsapp but you don't want to give whatsapp access to your um, uh, yeah, contact contacts or address book uh, which is quite nice so you have this feature now available it's an android feature actually but it's nice that they have integrated it in here which is i think quite nice and cool let's go back i was a bit too fast there wallpapers and style has the new configurable uh, lock screen and home screen style so here i can just configure the the watch face like instead of this one i could use this one or this one or this one or this one in the corner which i like this one here with the nice animation there, the old kind of Xperia stylish. I like this one actually. So let's go with this one and let's go out of here and uh, let's lock the screen. Let's, there you can see it with this nice second handle there going around. Looks pretty nice with this uh, nice wallpaper there. Let's unlock it. And yeah, this is the wallpaper and styles option there. We have some other options now regarding the colors and we can change the wallpaper as well as the shortcuts that we can set up here. So we have various different shortcuts that we can set up like device control I don't really need, but do not disturb might be very helpful to have in there. So I have like this in here and uh, the right shortcut I can turn on and off as well for Google Wallet, for example, which I like to do. And uh, yeah, this is a possibility. You can see the other shortcuts there. I cannot really change, but those two are changeable. So if I go on my lock screen now, I have now here above the ones that I cannot change, I have the shortcuts like to do not disturb and wallet, which is I think quite nice if I want to do this. And yeah, some YouTube comments are floating in here as well. Then we have um, show notifications on the lock screen as well. And then we have some screen options. Uh, home screen you can see like not so much options there in terms of like changing anything because you can do it as the uh, widgets there but it's nice that it's showing me the actual home screen that i'm actually having so not just a representation of any home screen but just my home screen and i can choose the colors here i can directly see how it has like an effect on my home screen with all my icons placed the way i do it themed icons for example i can show actually should <laughs> show me a representation there we go our themed icons would look like on the screen it took a while there uh, you can see like also the cool thing about this one is without like really turning it on it will show me this one and i'll see okay netflix for example doesn't have this themed icon the sony music app uh, doesn't have this icon and some other ones so this is why i probably uh, leave it turned off uh, contrast color contrast i can turn on and i can change the app grid the app grid i didn't think they changed the app grid but what we'll notice is when you first started that the icons are much larger now than they were before um i don't have anything against it because i think it looks more 
yeah, easier to hit those icons then and, and stylish, not not too bad. But if you don't like it, uh, I'm not sure if there's a way to change it with uh, the app grid. Like maybe you, if you change it to to this one here, four by five, show something different. Nah, not really. Uh, maybe you have to make it smaller. And the interesting thing is, uh, or one of the downsides, yeah, if you make it smaller, 4 by 7 then I think you get the oldish kind of style. The only problem is if you change those settings, it will automatically apply it to your home screen and then everything like you set it up before is gone. So keep that in mind. I, I did this, I did make this mistake now on camera, but uh, yeah, I like 4 by 6 one with a little bit of larger icons. Maybe I'm getting old. Um, I will set up my home screen <laughs> later on again, like it was before. Good that I recorded this video, so I know how it will look look like before. Um, uh, what else is there? We have uh, now uh, the new sites panel that has been updated. So dashboard is available now, as you can see here, and I can uh, like say use dashboard. And what I get now is the quick toggle. So instead of like scrolling down here to quick toggles, if I'm like for example in here in, in an application. I cannot like do this, I cannot go up there, I can just simply go in here and can say okay turn off Wi-Fi or use one of the quick toggles or change the brightness control, very very nice indeed. I have also some other options like for example scroll down here on the thing to, to just bring also my notifications down which is nice and I can swipe up there as well to give me the 21 by 9 multitasking because the 10 mark 5 still has 21 by 9 aspect ratio you have the multitasking options there as you can see i didn't really use that uh, this much but it's, it might be some uh, uh, hand, handy thing then the main and uh, pop-up is possible as well so i have the possibility to have one pop-up uh, application you can see here from down here below i can set up one pop-up application like chrome and uh, one full screen application just like facebook or chrome uh, whatever I like to have there which is possible and I can configure this new side sense uh, panel there as well this is the same as we have with the Xperia 1 Mark 6 so nice that we have now this option there as well and it gives us uh, for example the headphone controls I like to use this talking about headphones controls what you will see is that the app is now called Sound Connect by Sony so they uh, changed the name from Sony Headphones app I think to the Sound Connect app uh, and give some nice new functionality and new UI as well there but this is uh, one interesting thing as well that I noticed. Um, the other thing that I cannot really show you is Bluetooth LE support so if you have Bluetooth devices it now has Bluetooth LE support for broadcasting as well uh, which is I think a nice setting there as well. I don't see anything else here that uh, might be useful to show you. So th those are the settings that I uh, found. So those are the changes that I found so far on the Xperia 10 Mark V. What I will do now is try to vlog with this device to see if we have any camera improvements and I will take some photos as well. Camera samples. We start off with the front-facing camera of the Xperia 10 Mark V. Nothing to write home about. 8 megapixels only. It has a nice, like, also in the stimulant situation, exposure, at least on my face. It's 1080p only. Actually, all of the sensors can only shoot 1080p because the Snapdragon 8... Uh, nee, Snapdragon 695 can only do 1080p on those. But still... I think it's okay-ish kind of for video chat and such thing. Doesn't have autofocus even though it's showing me a nice little box around my face. It's just for exposure and white balance. I think if I hold something in there, the white balance might slightly change. And uh, then also exposure uh, might have adjusted as well. So let's check out the back facing cameras. I'm a bit curious now, is it even using this microphone here? I tried it earlier, plugged it into the three and three and a half millimeter headphone jack and it wasn't working. So I'm now using USB-C dongle to see if it's working. Hopefully it's working. Anyway, um, I'm not out. I'm not going out. 1080p, by the way, because it's raining. And I can show you some rain droplets because they have a 2x zoom here. And hopefully it can focus on them. I can see them already on the... I can go up to 10x there. Uh, yeah. Let me go a bit back. Yeah, I think this is better trying to focus. Anyway, we have also an ultra wide angle that is also any, only 8 megapixel, just like the 2 times tele. Um, not the best for sure, also not in this indoor situation. So let's go back to the 1x one, which is uh, definitely much better. One of our 2 inch size sensor and uh, this should work quite nice. Hopefully, really, this microphone is working, otherwise you're listening to the internal mics. 
uh, weird because I was keeping in mind that back then when I was testing with Android 14, I could just plug in a mic in the headphone jack and can use it for vlogging. Now it didn't work for some reason. Maybe it doesn't like this mic. I have to change the mic. I'm using the mic now with USB Type-C external uh, audio dongle to see if it is then working. Well, hopefully it's working there. And they didn't downgrade this one. We don't have a new camera application, so still the old camera application that reminds me a bit of this old sony kind of the ancient days, almost like of the yeah Sony's of yesteryears, uh, which feels a bit old. So I would really Sony to also feature upgrade their older phones, even the mid-range phones. Like I would want to see the Xperia 10 Mark 6 camera application here, also on the one mark on the 10 Mark 5, because it's much more modern and gives you at least the feeling of something is changing there. Uh, otherwise, yeah. Also better HDR, I think, uh, you get with the new app. And the app in general is a bit feels snappier. And which this one is feels like old and has maybe a little bit more features here and there. But like the manual focus, photos, photo, photo mode is available that apparently is not available on 10 Mark 6. So yeah, talking about photos, maybe we should check out some photos that I shot with the 10 Mark 5. So trying it again a few times, it seems like it's only using the internal mics. It's not using external mics anymore. Sony, why did you downgrade your 10 Mark 5? Please fix this bug because I like to use external mics. If you have a headphone jack, you have a camera application, why not able to... <sighs> and I thought I'd quickly show you the user interface and why I don't like it so much. It's a bit Stone Age. Yeah, a video mode, a photo mode here, you can switch between those two. You have like the slider here, 2x, and can zoom in up to 10x if you want to. And uh, there you go. There we go. There you go. <laughs> Has this animation for photos, which doesn't make sense for videos. Yeah, maybe. Uh, we have lots and lots of modes there and quick toggles that we can set up. Like, what is this here? I think this is bokeh mode. And then we can select the bokeh here. Uh, it's like... <sighs> No one-handed usage possible with this one here. We can set up scenes uh, like for auto, for on and off, for night mode. And here we can set up the white balance and exposure, I think it is. So yeah, this is not... And this, this green dot is like just showing that the camera is running from Android. Um, it's not really optimized. You see that I have to use it this way because I cannot use it this way. It's, the interface is like on its head now. <laughs> So, but at least we have like the, the uh, pro mode. It just switches the mode and then we have like a pro mode here. I think on the 10 Mark 6 they omitted it completely. Uh, so here I can set up EV control, ISO, I can set up like the way I want to. So a little bit of, and I can turn on HDR and turn it off. So yeah, this user interface, it feels a bit clunky and old. And I'm really not sure why Sony is doing it. And as you can see, we have only photo and video modes. like. Where are all the other modes? Like we had like, ah, there we go. There's mode. Like, ah, there we have it. We have Google Lens, we have slow motion. We have manual mode that we were into, but the AR stickers and other things they had before, they're all gone here. So yeah, it feels like really completely abandoned. So I'm I'm sorry to say that, but uh, if you are a 10 Mark 5 user, yes, you get a new update, but uh, pff, don't expect mm, anything from Sony in regards of new features. The only thing that you get in terms of new features are from Google. So first picture, selfie cam, you can see 8 megapixels only, not much. You can see my face. It, I'm happy. I have a watch on. My skin color is not completely mistakenly wrong. It's like redrawing the eyes a little bit and the eyebrows there. Um, total, totally soft, even though the soft skin effect is turned off, but this is just 8 megapixels. But I can see that I have Moondrop headphones there, Xiaomi Buds 5, Moondrop Voyager, iPhone 16 Pro packaging. And what is this here? Uh, I think this should be the Cross, 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 Porta something. KPH 40, I think it is. Cross, KPH 40. Anyway, uh, let's go to the real thing. This is real deal. This is a macro shot 2x time with the yeah, 2x 8 megapixel sensor there. And it's okay. I mean, it's 8 megapixels. What do you expect? We can see some of the structures here of this little wind muff there. Which is quite nice. And there's a bokeh mode shot. Timmy was not cooperative, so I had to replaced with this thing here. Uh, a bokeh shot. 
quite nice. I think the separation between foreground and background is sounds like maybe here a bit weird. It's doing quite a good job, but because everything is almost soft here, um, yeah, it's okayish kind of job. And this is 10x zoom. Forget about it. I like the fast shutter speed, and it's not doing any processing at the, at the end. But that's it. You cannot read almost everything. So I checked out 4x zoom. 4x zoom is like a 2x crop of the 2x sensor. And this is, I think, what you can still get away with. It's not the best if you zoom into 100%, but you can still read everything here. So this is the one that I would most likely go with maximum. Uh, I will show you later why. I wanted to do a main camera sensor bokeh kind of shot, but there's not much bokeh there left, as you can see here. This should be sharp, actually. I'm not sure what's going on there. It's a bit of noisy already, because it's a bit of a dim -lit situation. Um, then I shot this because I thought it might be artsy and artistic and good HDR test. I think it handles this pretty nice, the light sources there. And the focus fall off is now the real bokeh that you get with the 1X sensor. And then a close-up shot 1X sensor there. It should have focused here, but I think it's slightly back focusing here. And yeah, detail level is not the best, even though it's 12 megapixels there. You can see indoors, forget about it. This is a shot f with 5x and I have this uh, nice assist turned on there for, for, for zoom assist. which basically draws a box around. We can zoom in, you can just tap on it and it will zoom into this box. But forget about it. It's like too noisy and too grainy. And like I said, 4x is the sweet spot where I would say it's still, still workable and doable. And I forgot about the ultra wide angle. But Basically, what I wanted to say you uh, tell you here is no improvements at all in terms of cameras. Sony didn't do any feature updates for the 10 Mark V. <laughs> More likely a feature downgrade because for some reason my external mic is not working anymore, which is like for videos a deal breaker because I made a video about it, how good it is to use it as a vlogging device because you can use external mics with the 3.5mm headphone jack. But for some reason it's not working anymore. So what's going on here, Sony? So overall Xperia 10 Mark V, I feel a bit sorry for those people who bought it for the full price, like 450 or 460 euros or something like this. When it came out for 200 bucks, I cannot really complain about it, but I'm a bit angry that the microphone, the external microphones are not working anymore on this one after Android 15 update. What? what? What are you thinking, Sony? Please fix this again, because I want external mic support on this device. It would be a perfect, like on-the-go vlogging device where I can take this instead of the One Mark Six, uh, because if it falls down and breaks, I'm not like worried because the One Mark Six fell down and the screen on the top broke. So um, it's still functioning, but it looks a bit weird with the spider net there on the top corner. Uh, anyway. Um, Android 15 is now out there, probably the last update for the 10 Mark V. I hope Sony will improve on the mid-range devices, especially the 10 Mark VI doesn't have Android 15 yet. I hope they will include Android 15, they will include external mic support with the 3.5mm headphone jack and that they will have on the 10 Mark VI, because they have longer support for this one, also some feature upgrades, especially manual mode, for example, that they had on the 10 Mark V, gone on the 10 Mark VI. 10 Mark 7 also coming out pretty soon, hopefully. They will make a big jump also in terms of performance because for the prices of over 400 euros, I expect a better CPU, maybe even 120 hertz, at least 90 hertz, but 120 is already the standard for the display and some better software and better software support, especially with updates that are not taking six months for like a feature update that is like so lame like this one that I'm using here right now, the Pro Video Fold feature on the One Mark 6 that I almost like should rage about it. Anyway, uh, nice that they brought out to Android 15 to the 10 Mark 5 and it's working fine. I think the system runs a bit smoother than it did before. So I didn't have so much hiccups and so on uh, with this device. Uh, what is your experience with Sony mid-range devices, especially the 10 Mark 5, but also 10 Mark 6 if you bought it or even the 10 Mark 5? Uh, I hope no one is using older devices. Um, what do you think about this device in general? Should it keep this 21 by 9 aspect ratio for the 10 Mark 7 or should it go to the 20 by 9 aspect ratio that the 1 Mark 6 uh, set up as a new like probably front line or goal line to the Xperia lineup. So what do you think? Write it on the comment section. That's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.